In this video, I'm going to demonstrate why all OLED TVs will blow out the specular highlight detail in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Xbox Series X when played in HDR10. Keep watching. This Xbox Series X is hooked up to a Canon reference monitor with its inbuilt HDR toolkit and I've just switched on the false color overlay and I shall summon the waveform monitor as well. Hopefully you can see still even through the clouds that the sun in the middle of the screen is actually reaching all the way up to 10,000 nits and if I actually switch on the frame luminance monitor you can see that the peak is recorded as 10,000 nits and you know you can basically just align the color of the sun on this false color system to the luminance scale on the left side of the screen and what I'm going to do now is to switch off the false color system and also switch off the waveform monitor and then we shall try to go into the game's general option submenu to see if there's any way for us to adjust the in-game peak brightness but unfortunately there is no way because you know there is only an on-off toggle for the HDR10 functionality and if we go into the HDR game calibration screen on the Xbox Series X this will allow us to set various HDIG parameters and what I'm going to do is to just go for a really absurd minimum TML value so obviously I think the ideal one is to set it as zero but just to test it out what I'm going to do is to just go for a minimum TML or minimum tone matte luminance of around one nit which is the highest possible and then for the next screen I'm going to just drop the max TML or maximum tone matte luminance to 300 nits and then just as an experiment I'm going to drop the maximum full frame tone matte luminance down to 300 nits as well and after doing this we are going to get back into the game obviously we have to quit the game for it to take effect so what I'm going to do is to quit the game and then restart the game again and I think you know the loading time will be longer than the quarantine duration when traveling back from a red list country so just bear with me for a while and I'll cut to when the game has loaded so after a long wait we are now back into the game and what I'm going to do is to summon the false color system and also the waveform monitor and you can see that there is no change whatsoever regardless of what HGIG parameters we have set in the Xbox Series X menu. This means that the game is not responsive or does not adapt its peak brightness to the HGIG parameters. So the sun is still at 10,000 nits which is very very bright. And what we're going to do is to just you know rotate the camera angle to look at these snow mountains here and you can see that the snow on the mountains you know is comfortably above two three four hundred nits you know if we pull up a pixel value checker and we try to navigate to the snow while it's moving you can see that you know it's probably between 200 to 300 nits even reaching 400 nits if you can look at the waveform monitor so what we are going to do now is to assess the impact or implications this has when playing this game on OLED TV. So we're going to start with the LG C1. Setting HDR tone mapping to HGIG will naturally clip the most spectral highlight detail you can see around the clouds. Now if you go to off then it will retain more spectral highlight detail but if you actually set HDR tone mapping to on which engage dynamic tone mapping then it will also brighten the picture and cause more specular highlight detail to be lost and in theory obviously HDR2 mapping off would be the best to retain more specular highlight detail but you know if we actually turn to face the snow mountains you can see that by toggling between HDR2 mapping on off and HGIG off will actually suppress the overall brightness or APL the average picture level too much causing the whole picture to look a bit more muted all in the name of recovering more specular highlight detail. There is no way to get the most optimal picture in this game because the output of the game is fixed at 10,000 nits which is in my opinion ridiculous because on a 700 nit OLED regardless of what you do 
you will either sacrifice the overall brightness or the specular highlight detail or you can try to maintain some specular highlight detail but because the source output is all the way up to 10,000 nits there will always be some highlight compression going on which will make the highlights look clipped anyway and what we're going to do next is to engage Dolby Vision on the Xbox Series X to try and run this game in Dolby Vision and see if there's any improvement Right, so we are actually playing this game in Dolby Vision. I think, you know, there is some improvement, but I think if you look at the clouds, there is still going to be a lot of highlight compression going on because, you know, Dolby Vision can't really work wonders when you're trying to cram 10,000 nits worth of specular highlight detail to a 700 nit, 800 nit OLED. You know, it's just physics, really. You know, when you try to squeeze this much highlight detail within such a small space in terms of peak brightness then obviously there will be some compression and again the specular highlight will come across looking clipped. Next we shall move on to check out a Sony A90J OLED. Now the Sony A90J is one of the brighter OLED TVs on the market because of its EVO panel and metallic heatsink that is installed on the TV. But even then, whether we choose HDR tone mapping off or gradation preferred or even brightness preferred, some specular highlight detail is still going to be blown out, even with Sony's dynamic tone mapping. And this is because of the unrealistic 10,000 nit output from the Xbox Series X when this game is played. And as a bonus, this is the 75-inch QN900A. This TV, because of its natively high peak brightness and Samsung's tone mapping that tries to retain as much specular highlight detail as possible, will preserve more highlight detail than what OLEDs were capable of without drastically affecting the overall brightness too much. So if you pay attention to the circular shape of the sun itself and also how the rays radiate from it and also the highlight detail within the clouds, this Samsung Neo QLED TV did a better job of retaining more specular highlight detail because of LED LCD's inherently higher brightness reserve. In my opinion, Microsoft or whichever studio responsible for this game should design an in-game peak brightness slider so that you know the tone map can be rolled off from the game itself rather than forcing a 10,000 nit output, which probably cannot be handled by most consumer displays because the peak brightness of these consumer displays are so limited that if you try to force a 10,000 nit output from the game to the TV, the highlight detail will either get clipped or it will look so compressed that it will probably appear as blown out anyway. If you'd like to watch more of our HDR game analysis, please click here for our playlist and I'll see you in the next video.